How does the West perceive China's rise to global prominence? Are we looking at a threat or are we simply panicking? As we delve into the heart of this matter, it's essential to decipher the West's viewpoint on China's ascent as a global technological and economic powerhouse. A significant document that has drawn attention to this is the report by the British Parliamentary Intelligence and Security Committee, also known as the ISC. It suggests China's ambition poses a national security threat to the UK. However, is this perception of threat somewhat exaggerated? The report might not be taking into consideration the chaotic and divided nature of China's internal politics. The dragon might be rising, but it's worth noting that it's not soaring smoothly. There are turbulences and internal struggles that can't be overlooked. The real question we need to ask ourselves is, is China the threat? Or is our perception of it the real danger? Let's delve into the West's own behavior and commercial interests when dealing with China. How much of our fear is self-inflicted? In recent years, there's been a noticeable decline in Western self-confidence. As we grapple with internal issues, we've seen an erosion of trust, not just within our own borders, but on the global stage as well. Our mishandling of issues, such as the war on terror, has not gone unnoticed. These missteps have chipped away at the trust between the West and China, creating a chasm that seems to widen with each passing day. We need to understand that our actions have consequences. Our interventions in Russia, for instance, have not yielded the positive outcomes we might have hoped for. Instead, they have led to an increased skepticism from China towards our aspirations. This skepticism, born from our own inconsistencies, is a reflection of the doubts that China and indeed the world may have about the West's intentions. In our dealings with China, we've exhibited a pattern of inconsistency that has not gone unnoticed. On one hand, we express concern over China's growing influence. Yet on the other hand, we continue to engage in commercial activities that contribute to this very growth. This dichotomy sends mixed signals and it's not difficult to see why China might be skeptical of our intentions. We often view China's ambition to become a global, technological and economic superpower as a threat. But how much of this fear is born out of our own insecurities and lack of self-confidence? How much of it is a reflection of our own muddled and panicked state of mind? We need to take a step back and reflect. Are we reacting out of fear? Or are we basing our actions on clear, rational thinking? Are we letting our insecurities cloud our judgment? Or are we making decisions that are in the best interest of our nations? The West needs to reflect on its own inconsistencies before pointing fingers. It's time to look in the mirror. So, what's the best way to tackle the perceived threat from China? How do we stop the panic and start the dialogue? The report by the British Parliamentary Intelligence and Security Committee has some recommendations. These suggestions encompass a broad spectrum of actions from strengthening cybersecurity to improving domestic tech capabilities. While these recommendations are valuable, they may not be enough. They target the symptoms, not the core issue. The report, in its focus on external threats, overlooks a crucial aspect. It fails to address the elephant in the room, the West's own muddled and panicked state of mind. Our perception of China as a threat is, in many ways, a reflection of our own fears and insecurities. It's a mirror that reflects the decline of Western self-confidence and the mishandling of issues like the war on terror. This isn't to downplay the challenges posed by China's rise. But we must understand that our panic and confusion are not helping. They are, in fact, exacerbating the situation. The landscape of international politics is complex and panic only muddies the waters. So how can we counter this? The first step is to stop panicking. Panic breeds fear and fear clouds judgment. It's time to replace panic with dialogue, open, honest, and respectful. We need to reflect on our own inconsistencies and commercial interests when dealing with China. Understanding our own motivations can help us navigate this complex relationship more effectively. The solution isn't just about raising defenses or enhancing technological prowess, it's about a shift in mindset. It's about facing our fears, acknowledging our own insecurities, and working towards a more balanced and constructive relationship with China. In the grand chessboard of international politics, the pieces we control are not just on the board, but also within ourselves. Our perceptions, our fears, our actions, these are the pieces we must learn to maneuver wisely. Until we face our own fears honestly, China will continue to have the upper hand. The solution lies not in external action but in internal reflection.